Hey, it's Dave from CG Shortcuts. Today, we're going to do this. We're going to look at five things you didn't know in Octane. Number one, fixing smooth glass. So here we are in Cinema 4D and we've got Octane fired up. You can see here we've got our little gumball machine. And if you have a look at the glass, it's looking a little bit funny. You can see the geometry in our viewport over here and there's not too much out of the ordinary there. But if we change cameras and zoom in a bit, you can see it's looking pretty nasty through our Octane viewer. It's looking a little bit like a disco ball. And if we zoom in, you can see these faces aren't looking very smooth at all. So you might think we can fix that by adjusting our Fong angle. But if we come up and grab that tag and uncheck that and change our angle to 90 degrees, you'll see nothing much changes. So let's undo that and try something else. Another good fix for this sort of thing is adding some subdivision. So we'll chuck in a subdivision surface. And it's definitely subdivided it. But now we've got twice as many of these dodgy looking lines. You could even try coming up to tags and under C4D octane tags, bringing in an octane object tag and upping the subdivision on that, which helps a little bit, but it's still not looking all that smooth. So let's cut to the chase. How do we fix it? It's actually really easy. Let's get rid of that tag and we'll go and have a look at our glass material. Let's double click that. And this is just a plain old octane specular material. Pretty simple roughness settings and reflection. Same with film width and film index. Probably the most important setting in a glass material is the index of refraction. We've got ours set at 1.52, which is the standard for glass. So that's all good. So what's the issue? Let's come back to our viewer. And if we right click and choose store and render buffer, we'll store an image so we can do a before and after with this little slider. Now, all we have to do is come over here and if we click on common, we'll find the setting that we need to fix this. All we need to do is turn on smooth and we'll let that render a bit. And now if we drag this across, you get the before and after. That's looking much smoother. Easy. And we can get rid of that comparison by coming up to compare and turning that off. And that brings us to number two, letting light through glass. Back in our gumball scene, you can see now that we've got our glass nice and smooth, it's looking a little bit dark inside there. But I'll show you a nice easy little trick that you might not know to let a bit more light in through this glass. First, we'll right click and store a render buffer so we can have a before and after. Then we'll come down to our glass shader and move this over here. The setting that we're after is down here and it's fake shadows. All we wanna do is turn that on and check this out. Let's let a whole bunch more light in and everything's looking much brighter and a bit more realistic. And if we drag this across and do a before and after, you can see that a bit clearer. So don't forget that little trick next time you're working with glass in Octane. Number three, working with Cinema 4D noise. So in this scene, we've got a simple sphere here that we're gonna turn into a planet. So we wanna add a texture with a bit of noise on it. So what you can do is right click over the object in the live viewer and we'll create a new Octane glossy material. That should automatically be applied to our object so let's grab this guy and open it up. We'll use the node editor this time. So let's click here and close that. All right, let's get some noise on here. So you can see all the different nodes we have available down the left here. And if we click on the C4D tab, we'll get the ones that are native to Cinema 4D that we can use with Octane Render. Let's grab a noise and bring that in and link it up to the diffuse and to the bump. And you can see that's now visible in our live viewer. Let's go into that noise. We want some more detailed noise, so we'll change that noise pattern to something like Luca. And here's where you might start to run into problems. You can see in our thumbnail, it's nice and detailed, but over in our render, it's not looking great. If we go over here and right click on our texture preview and choose open window, we'll make this a bit bigger. You can see there's plenty of resolution in there. So what's going on? It definitely doesn't match that in our render. Let's close that and have a look in our Octane settings. We'll click that. And over under settings, let's have a look at the C4D shaders tab. And here's our problem. When Octane renders a Cinema 4D shader, including noise, it converts it into a texture and loads that into the RAM. And this render size is how big that texture is gonna be. Right now it's only 128 pixels by 128 pixels. So let's crank that up to 2K. 
Let's close that and restart the render. And there we go, all fixed. It's looking a lot more like a planet. Number four, a little trick to save RAM. Okay, we're back in our planet scene, only this time we've got a bit of a different setup. If we go over here and click on the texture tag, and we'll open that node editor again. We're using textures this time instead of noise. A quick tip here, if you wanna organize these, just select them all and right click and come down to auto arrange selected. That's gonna make life a bit easier. If we zoom out a bit and grab these textures, you can see they're all 8K, which is pretty big. And while we're here, just make sure if you've got a displacement map in there, that you've set the displace node to match your texture resolution. And you can see it's 8K here as well. Okay, let's move that out of the way and shrink it down and we'll fire up the render. You may or may not know, if we come down and click anywhere in the viewer, we'll get some information down the bottom left there. It'll tell you what GPUs you're using. I've got one GTX 1080 and right now it's at 54 degrees, which is not a bad temperature to be. But the most important bit of info for this tutorial is down here where it talks about the VRAM. My graphics card has a total of eight gigabytes to play with. And already in this scene, we've used 1.2 gigabytes. And depending on your scene size, it's actually possible to run out of RAM. And when that happens, your scene will not render. This particular scene is pretty simple, so we're probably not gonna have that problem, but I wanna show you a little trick if you do run into issues, how you can save a lot of this RAM. Let's come back over to our textures. Right now, Octane is putting all four of these textures into the RAM as RGB images. So there's three channels for each image. And at 8K, that's a lot of information to be stored in memory. But our specular roughness and displacement maps don't need to be RGB. They're all just black and white images. So we don't need a red, green, and blue channel. So if we grab those and we come up to type, we'll change that to float, which more or less tells Octane to only look at the grayscale values. It should load everything into the RAM a lot quicker now. And if we come down here, you can see we're only using 870 megabytes now which is a huge saving. And you can imagine a scene with loads of textures and loads of geometry that's gonna really save the day. Number five, double-sided rendering. Okay, we've got a little Octane Ace of Spades set up here. And this is just a simple plane. There's no thickness whatsoever. And if we turn it around, you can see there's an image on the back and on the front. That's all well and good in the viewport, but let's fire up a standard render and see what it looks like. Front is good. Let's spin it around. Back, hit render, is good. Now let's see if we can achieve that effect in Octane. Let's put him back and take a look at this setup. If we click on this material, which down here says card front, which is this guy right here, he's mapped to the front side. And if we click our other material, it's mapped to the back side. Nice and simple. Let's come over here and change our renderer to Octane. We'll close that up and we'll fire up our live viewer. Interesting, it's showing us the back of the card. Let's come over here and turn this around. Uh-oh, it looks like both sides are the same. But don't worry, we can fix it. Let's pause that live viewer for now, and we'll come down and grab our front and back textures. And back up here, materials, we wanna convert the materials to octane materials. Let's grab our old materials, these guys, and delete those. These are our new Octane materials. You can tell by the checkerboard pattern in the thumbnail here. We'll double click that. And in our node editor, get rid of that. Let's move this around and zoom out a bit. We wanna bring both materials into our workspace here. So we'll just grab our card back and drag that on here as well. Okay, the next thing we need is a mix material. Let's just pop that in here and zoom in a bit. And we wanna link the card front to material one and card back to material two. That new mix material is down here now. We wanna drag that onto our card and we'll get that out of the way. And you can see in our viewer, that's not quite right either. We're kind of getting what we expected. It's a mix of both materials, but we're getting close. There's just one more step to get this right. And it's just over here. It's called the side node. If we bring that in and connect it to the amount, ta-da. Let's close that and have a look. It still looks a bit weird in the viewport, but as you can see the back and the front are working perfectly for us in the live viewer. And that's how you render double-sided in Octane. Bonus tutorial, round edges. Because you made it through all five of these, I'm giving you a little bonus. 
I also left it to last because you just might know this one already. Say you've spent hours modeling something amazing like this, and you realize all of your edges look unnaturally sharp, and you need a quick, easy way to round them and make them look a bit softer. You could come up here and grab our old friend the bevel deformer, which looks cool from back here, but if we zoom in, it can give you some pretty weird looking bevels in places you might not want bevels. A better option might be to fake it in Octane. Let's go up and delete that bevel deformer, and we'll grab our Octane material tag, then down here under the common tab, all we have to do is turn up the rounded edges setting. Let's put it up to one, and there you go. That's looking way better. And so easy. And the good news is it doesn't add any geometry or slow anything down. And that concludes today's tutorial. Thought I'd try something a bit different this week. Let me know if you learned something new or if you already knew some of these. And as usual, you can find a whole bunch of extra stuff on our Patreon page. Thanks for watching. Let me know what you want to see in the comment section below. Or you can leave a like or dislike. And don't forget to subscribe and click on that little bell icon for more videos and free stuff. Catch you next time.